Okay, hello everybody and good day. This is our recorded class for module 703 Panels for Managers, specifically for module, uh, sorry, for task three. Okay, so um, here are the cortex as for you to remember and also the indicative content. We are now around in the cost profit centers and allocating costs, analysis of financial data and uh, going there down okay as before we answer your assignment questions uh, i'd like to first focus on uh, the roce roi and pv irr and payback so all the remaining slides would give you uh, some uh, it, it would make sense to you okay so you will not be able to make an evaluation without being able to understand these things okay because in your assessment criteria, you have to make an evaluation. And to be able to evaluate, you're going to use these things, okay? So that's the first thing I'm going to discuss first so that uh, you will have also um, a more understanding of the Excel sheets that I have uploaded in the portal. Those are just templates for you to use to easily calculate them. Um, and I did my best to have some... Uh, dig into this so that you, you can easily answer your assignment. Okay, so before we go into identifying the criteria uh, by which the proposal can be judged, which are very practical, uh, we have to first take a look at the financial metrics, okay? And the financial metrics that we have said in doing so, in making the evaluation, you have to use uh, the ROSI, ROI, and PV, and IRR, okay? So um, let's take a look at first the return on capital employed. So return on capital employed is uh, financial metrics which you're going to use to calculate how much um, profitability and efficiency you're going to get in return by employing your capital. So that's called the capital employed. Say, okay, so for example, I have a plan of putting up a halo-halo business and my setting up amount would be 20,000 pesos, for example. So this is what we consider as the capital employed, okay? And after like how many days, I want you to uh, try to calculate like how many days would it be depending on the price of one cup of halo hal that you'll be able to sell, of course. And you are able to generate a prediction of around 35,000 of sales and revenue. Um, Now you're going to calculate the ROCE or the ROCE by getting the earnings before the income tax okay uh divided by the capital employed so in this case we are going to um calculate the uh first you're going to get the ebit which is your earnings before the income taxes and all so that is your earnings at 35 right this is your 35 and um Capital employed is the 20,000. But um, to be able to get, this is just your sales. So we, we have to get the EBIT by removing the operating expenses, okay? Um, we haven't removed yet the, the, uh, the taxes here, okay? But we have the operating expenses because that's really normal. So what we're going to do here is to first deduct your um, your setting up amount from the sales or revenues that you have gathered, okay? So first thing we're going to do is to uh, divide, uh, uh, sorry, uh, deduct 35,000, okay? So that's 35 uh, minus, okay, let's just say 35K minus, you're going to deduct the 20K, which is your, uh, setting up amount, right? So what would be the answer here? Okay, of course, the answer would be what? 10, sorry, what is that? 5 minus 0 is 5, and 3 minus 2 is uh, 1. So you got 15K, right? So this 15K is your EBIT. So EBIT is 15K, you divide it by the capital employed, which is 20K, okay? So what would be the answer? Okay, so this will give you now a 0 0.75. We're gonna multiply that by 100 to get the percentage that gives us a 75% 
of roses. So that means, uh, that means that our uh, profitability and efficiency uh, in terms of our capital employed is at 75%, which is a good idea. Okay, so that means having the halo-halo is something that uh, very good. Okay, so you can you can actually um, uh, evaluate this kind of uh, business as something which is viable. Na? So that's how you're going to use your um, return on capital employed. Okay. Right, so moving on. Okay, so let's take a look at now um, return on investment. So the first one was return on capital employed. This time you're going to get or calculate, evaluate your return on your investment. So we are going to focus on our investments. So for example, here, um, we are going to buy and sell a bicycle. So I bought a bicycle at 50 KD. Then you're going to sell it for us. I'm going to sell it for 60 KD. So how much are you going to earn here if you uh, sold it? So the answer, of course, is 10, right? So you earned 10 KD, right? So ROI tries to directly measure the amount of return on a particular investment relative to the investment cost because you're trying to see your returns from your investment cost, okay? So now you're going to get net profit, um, divided by your cost of investment. So we are going to calculate our ROI here. Very simple. So our net profit is actually 10. Yeah. So we got 10 KD here. And you have to divide it by the cost of your investment, which is your 50 KD. Yeah. So what would be your answer here? Okay. So it will give you 0 0.2. And we just multiply that by 100. To make it into percentage so this is actually 20 percent. so therefore uh buying and selling a bicycle worth 50 kd and selling it at 60 i'm gonna earn 10 kd which is actually 20 percent of my uh cost of investment so my roi is at 20 percent. so not bad if it's a brand new but of course the cost will be for if it's a used one if you have used it for one year then of course there's a depreciation value there and that is another story okay so that's how you're going to calculate your ROI. Okay, so I hope that's clear and I hope that helps. Now let's go to your NPV. Okay, so your NPV is comparing the present value of your cash inflows and the present value of your cash outflows over a period of time. So that time would be could be a year or it could be five months or it could be three months, a quarter, etc. No. But NPV is used in capital budgeting and investment planning. So you're going to use your NPV when you budget for capital and when you decide or plan on investing on a certain project. By uh, using this, you'll be able to analyze the profitability and projected investment of a project. So there's a very complicated formula here, but we'll try to make it simple. And in the, uh, in the portal, we have... Uh, Excel sheets there that already have formulas, but it's always um, important to have a background on what's really going on behind the Excel sheet. No? So let's apply this NPV so we will be able to understand it further. Okay, so first thing, say I have a capital to start a business, um, which is uh, selling cookies and biscuits and some other uh, sweets, for example, at 250 KD. So I want to know what is the NPV after five months period, meaning my 250 KD, what would be its value? Uh, will I get something after I invest it? Okay, if I made that plan of investing it into a uh, shop selling cookies and biscuits. Um, or what will happen if I have some other options like another types of investment, like perhaps you're going to buy something and get an interest from that or save it in the bank and get a discount rate there, an interest rate that will give me some benefits as well. So we're going to use NPV now in this given time, it's five months period, okay? So let's take a look at now the, the formula and the given. So we have here a formula, your net present value is the sum of your cash inflow. You're going to divide it by one plus the rate discount that is given to you. And it has to be with the power of your time or the exponent of the T. The T is the number of 
the time periods that you have. And all of those sum would be, uh, we are going to deduct our C0, which is our initial investment. So the situation is uh, we have a capital, which is 250 KD, and we are predicting that we will be able to earn 125 KD for the next five months. That's a prediction. And how you're going to predict that? Of course, you're going to... Um, um, uh, estimate number of cookies that you'll be able to sell per day, then multiply that per week uh, by seven and by 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 thirty in one month and so on and so forth. No, so you have a, already a prediction of what would, will you able to earn if you're able to buy um and to sell like uh, this much of cookies. No, so in this case we have predicted that it will be around one hundred and twenty five k for the next uh, five months. So I was also planning otherwise to, uh, you know, if I will not go into this cookie business, I would be putting it in the uh, in the bank, okay? Where in the bank will give me 5% uh, returns. But I want to know how much I'm going to earn after five months if I put in the bank and how much I'm going to have or what's the value of my 250KD after five months if I invest it in making a cookie business, okay? All right, so given is the CFT, which is the predicted earnings at 125. That is your cash inflow during the period, okay? And then your R is a return for savings in the bank. This is your discount or your discount rate or your interest that you're going to earn from doing some sort of investment decisions like putting it in the bank, for example. And T is the number of time periods. That means the values of the month as the month progresses. That means in the first month, second month, third month, fourth month, there are there's a value there. And that's what we're trying to figure out using the formula. Okay, And of course, given is the C0, which is your cash outflow, uh, money that you're going to use to buy the materials. Of course, you're going to make a packaging, put some stickers, put some brandings, etc. So you have that as your cash outflow at C0. Okay, so... Um, going straight to the calculation as we have done in class, okay? So ito yung aking, uh, this is what I was able to do. So uh, forgive me for not able to type it directly to PowerPoint. I just took a picture and pasted it there at the same time. But anyway, more or less, this is the expected amount that you are uh, supposed to calculate applying the formula, okay? So as you uh, notice, I have here uh, the power of the time, which means, you're going to multiply it by itself three times, four times, until five times. And the value down here is the value that we have calculated with the power of time. Okay, So um, you are going to add all of this in the first month, the values of the month as it progresses. So in this case, I have 541 KD. So that means from my 250 KD, I have a value now after five months of uh, 541. Now, to be able to get the uh, NPV, I have to deduct the C0, which is my cash outflow at the beginning of the period, right? So now I'm going to deduct that from the, in the initial investment, which is C0 is 250. So uh, the total will be 291.16, quite a dinar, and that is my NPV. And as you can see, it's positive. So it's important that the NPV should be positive, okay? Mm. So otherwise, if I have uh, saved my money in the bank and after five months, I'm going to get the 5% five, uh, 5 rate uh, interest returns, maybe I'll just get around 12 KD if that is for, for five months. But um, I mean, that is for one year. So it depends on what is the arrangement you have with the bank. So maybe for one year, you get 5% and that would be around six and a half KD or six, yeah. Six ruba because for five months or six months, let's say six months, you have only like 12 KD. So um, I could see here now that investing my money, making now a capital budgeting and investment planning and investment decision that the proposal of having uh, a cookie business is going to be successful because as you can see, my money is doubled. So I think it's worth it to do the business than to just put it in the bank, sitting there and waiting for the 5% discount rate that will be given by the bank. Okay, so that's how NPV is used in um, evaluating such project and a pro, um, projects that you have. So starting the cookie shop is a good idea. And I'm expected to earn more money in cookie shop than just putting it in the bank. So this is how business 
business uh, people are making decisions on uh, how they're going to invest their money. So they would want the highest NPVs. That, that would mean they would be getting most money out of their investments for their projects and for their businesses. Okay, so I hope that's clear. For practice purposes, I'd like you to take a screenshot of this and then try to um, solve for the NPV. Um, let's pretend that we're going to invest in a mini garden and we want to plant to grow and sell flowers. Then the initial garden uh, initial cost would be 500 KD and we predict that at 200 KD, we'll be having it for the uh, every year in the next five years. So that means every every year there is a 200. So that means 200 times five. That will be your uh, that would be your cash inflow. Okay, 200 times five because every year you will have 200 for the next five years. So we use a discount rate at 10 percent, which represents the return that we're gonna have if we put our money elsewhere, like for example in a bank or in another business. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so uh, let me know if you're able to solve the NPV properly or successfully. Okay, so now let's go to IRR. IRR is the actually the letter R when you go to your NPV, which represents the discount rate that makes the net present value of all the cash flows, both positive and negative, from a particular project equal to zero. So in, in getting the IRR, we're going to put our NPV equal to zero. And it's essentially the rate at which the project breaks even in the NPV terms. Okay, so that's why we put it in the zero. All right, so to be able to calculate the, N, the IRR, um, we are going to apply it in a situation. And in this case, we have uh, the, the solution, uh, the, the situation is that, or the scenario is that we have an initial amount of $300, okay? So that's our um, investment, okay? Our cash outflow. And we are expected to have a flow of cash. That is our inflow of cash um, for a year is 100 per month. So that means you're going to multiply by 12. That would be your total um, cash inflow, okay? So that would be your total cash inflow, CF. See, so we're going to make use of 1,200. So to be able to do that, we're going to first make our NPV equal to zero. That means in the point wherein we have a break even and we're going to find out what is the discount rate. Okay, so to be able to do that, um, we already have the formula there. So we're going to put zero is equal to 1,200, which is your C CFT. And then the formula goes at it is, and we are going to deduct the initial amount, our C0, which is 300, okay? So then we're going to add 300 on both sides to find the R, okay? So here, um, I have already zero plus 300 on the side. So I added 300 there. So the other side also will get 300. Now you can see that on that side, we have uh, a negative 300 plus 300 will give you a zero. So that would be canceled. So what's left is only this 300 and this one, okay? Right, so uh, forgive me for not putting it all here. I just calculated it on the paper so you can easily just uh, understand it. And I didn't find much time to type it here in the PowerPoint. So just look at my calculations, okay? So bear with me, please. So then, as you can see here, we have added. 300 plus zero on this side. And in here, we have also 300 on this side. As you can see, there's a deduction here because of the formula, which is minus, okay? And so here becomes 300 and here becomes only this one. We already have canceled the positive and negative from there. And what's left here is that we're gonna remove this R and transpose it to the other side. So if we have here uh, 300, ITR and 1,200, okay? Then we add 300 plus 300 uh, R because here we have made um, 300. Actually, this gives us to this one down here because 300 times one, let me just clear it, okay? So what you're gonna do is this 300, you're gonna multiply it with the one here. So that gives us 300, right? 
And then uh, we are also going to multiply again uh, the 300 with the R. So that gives us the 300 R. Okay, so therefore we have plus 300 R. So, so R. So that's where, so that's where this 300 plus 300 R came from. Okay, galing doon. And so we equal that with the 1,200 on the other side. And we want to get rid of the variable here. We have to separate the one with the variable. So we have 300 R equal to 1,200 minus 300. So we have now 300 on both sides. We divide them by 300 on both sides so that we can get R as the remaining. Okay, and then we divide 900 divided by 300 will give us 3. We multiply it by 100 to get the percentage. So that means it's 300. At rate of 300%, the business will be very profitable. And so therefore, go on with the business. Okay? So I hope that's clear. Um, so we already have finished the ROI, ROCE, NPV, and the IRR. Okay, as you can see in your assignment questions, it's asking you to make a, a um, an evaluation of proposals and you have to take a look at down. It's written there in doing so, the evaluation methods such as ROC, ROI, and NPV and IRR. So now let's take a look at the payback. Okay, and let's take a look at some risk and treatment assessment. So you have to give some uh treatment of the risk after you identify identify them okay right so let's move on so the first thing that you can uh, consider in this uh, part of your assignment is from your module 704 wherein you also have created a cost benefit analysis wherein you're going to see what is the cost of a certain project and then you're going to see how much is the benefit so if the benefit um goes beyond the cost then you can go on with the project but if the benefit is just very little and it doesn't outgrow the cost or you might just have very little amount and it doesn't cover all your liabilities for example uh, in a uh, you're trying to make a beach resort and then you have done a cost benefit analysis that gives you like around 500 uh, KD, for example, for the next five years. So let's say in every year, you're going to earn 100 KD and the cost is around uh, 600 KD. Okay, and the benefit is 500 KD. Therefore, you have like 100 KD. So um, in that five years, you'll be earning only 500 KD. So that means in every year, you have 100 KD, right? So thinking about the other operating expenses, uh, the benefit doesn't uh, outweigh the cost. Therefore, you can just scrap the project because this project cannot give you any benefit. The benefit is very less comparing to the cost. Okay, so that's the CBA or the cost benefit analysis. You can go back to, three, uh, to 704 and try to see for the template that we uh, I have uh, placed there in calculating the cost benefit analysis. So you can find other resources as well. Okay, But this is one way you can judge a proposal by looking at the cost and benefit by using CBA. Okay, So what are the criteria by which the proposals can be judged? Of course, we use the uh, financial metrics that we have mentioned um, and all of those has a cost right the roi is already very uh, very very obvious and then the feasibility is how it's going to be implemented and if you are able to support it when you start doing the project also the alignment with organizational goals is this project aligned with our goals okay is this project going to help us in achieving our strategic objectives so that would be a question the alignment of organizational goals what are the risks um, that are associated with the project? Because in every risk, there is a, um, you know, there's a potential cost behind it. So also sustainability. How are you going to sustain your business with adapting to the change and circumstances as you go on with the project? So these are all criteria for judging a proposal if it's going to be viable or not.
Okay, so here's a summary of that. The criteria by which proposals can be judged. Okay, and remember that to be able to do the evaluation, you need to do those financial metrics. Okay, so let's go to 3.2. 3.2 uh, doesn't need much of a calculation. So, okay, so to critically analyze the viability of a, uh, of a proposal, you're going to look for the expenditure that you're going to use for the proposal. So you are going to identify the, the objectives and, of course, what are the problems it's going to solve if you're going to do the project, okay? Um, you're going to review the budget, right? You have to review the budget if the budget is enough for the project or if you have uh, a certain amount that is already uh, intended for that. Then, of course, you're going to evaluate the benefits by using the CBA and consider the risk. This is just a summary of 3.1 and you just elaborate 3.1, yeah? Okay, so another one is the 3.3, which is you're going to identify the strength and weaknesses of a proposal. That means you're going to evaluate a proposal. Okay. And you can use your proposal in 705. If not, it's okay. You create a new separate simple proposal like this. Okay. So my objective, for example, is an expansion of an online store. Okay. So why do I want to have an online store? Because I wanted to have... Um, Okay, so let's say I have a proposal to expand our online store because I know that having an online store will expand our uh, customer base. Okay, so then I'm going to give the proposal that uh, the website will be financed uh, by the estimation of this way. It's broken down into this way. So I need 100,000 pesos, for example. So 50,000 will go to website development. 30,000 will go to the inventory, then uh, 20,000 will go to marketing and promotion. So I'm going to give that to my manager, okay? And I'm going to wait for his uh, approval. So now if you're the manager, you're going to look at the things, okay, uh, that are written in the proposal itself. So now this proposal is very vague, general, okay? And so uh, it can just give uh, an estimation of each, but there are no financial uh, evaluations. There are no financial metrics like ROI, CROI, or NPV and IRR. Okay. So if I'm the manager, I'm going to give my feedback. Okay. So in this case, in 3.3, you have to give an evaluation. You have to summarize the strengths and weaknesses of the proposal, and then you're going to give feedback on the financial proposal. So here are my uh, feedback and uh, analysis or evaluation of the, uh, of the proposal. Okay, so the expansion of online uh, online uh, presence is number one. Uh, I would say that the project had detailed the breakdown of costs, okay, and they have uh, clear objectives and expected outcomes, which can help uh, the stakeholders understand the benefits, diba? But there are no CBA, diba? There's no cost benefit analysis there. I mean. A, a financial metrics, okay? Um, and then so on and so forth. Then I have here the weaknesses. So here it doesn't include information how the success of the project will be measured and evaluated. Like there is no smart objectives. Like by, by the end of five months, it should be able to break even, nothing like that, right? So that's one of the weaknesses. Um, also, it didn't provide any timeline, which also talks about and just same as number one. Uh, it doesn't have any information about the financial status because there are no uh, in, uh, inclusion of a balance sheet or an income statement. So therefore, I don't have any information about the financial information of the company, Okay, the financial situation of the company. And the proposal doesn't provide any information about the risk because there is no risks analysis. Yeah. There is no risk analysis. And also, there is no um, plan on how to uh, sustain the business in, th in terms of if in case there are some disruptions and changes in consumer behavior. Okay, so after putting the strengths and weaknesses, you are going to give your summary of your feedback here. So it would be like, for example, here, the expansion of our online store will result in significant growth and opportunities and provide positive return on investment. 
according to the ROI attached. Okay? But of course, there's no ROI attached here whatsoever. No financial metrics. So you have to put there that uh, it's not clear if we will be able to be profitable or efficient in this uh, project because it's not has been shown, something like that. Okay? So what's important is you're going to identify the strengths and weaknesses and then give your feedback to be able to achieve the assessment criteria. Okay, so in 3.4, you are now going to apply what we have learned in the beginning. Okay, you're going to apply what we have learned in the beginning, a calculation of an application of your ROSE. And also, I have an example there which you can just read it. Okay, and also we have your return on investment and also an example given there to you to read. And of course, now I know that this net present value has already made sense to you. Um, just read about it and I want you to explain them in 3.4. So all the things you have learned in, in the beginning of this lecture shall be applied in 3.4, okay? If you can do it so in other uh, task that's also fine but don't put all your answers all in one task so you will not make yourself repetitive okay so as i've said in in my example you can make a scenario for roi you can make a scenario for npv you can make a scenario for rose or you can uh, use the same scenario and just apply the following financial metrics so it's up to you how you're going to make your assignments. And uh, as promised, I'm going to take a look at the Excel file that we have that I have provided you uh, so you can maximize the use of it. Okay. So I hope that helps. Okay. And uh, please let me know if you have any problems on those. Now let's take a look at the last portion of that, which is the payback. The payback is the required time when your investment is already enough, uh, has generated enough cash flow to cover your initial investment. So for example, uh, the coffee shop, which is called AN1, coffee shop would invest 100000 and it would pro uh, project a generation, regenerated income or cash inflow at 25000 per year in cash inflows okay so that means how much you're gonna earn per month you're just gonna divide it by 12 okay but anyway we already have the initial investment there given and also the uh prospect up uh, projected or um, estimated cash inflow and the time is uh what you're gonna look for okay so to be able to do that you just have to divide the initial investment cost by the annual or monthly cash inflows. In this case, we have um, 100,000 divided by 25. That means it is per year. If you want to get it per month, then you have to divide it by 12 and get the amount. So in this case, AN1 will be able to uh, get the payback. That means break even after four years. Diba? So after four years, pa siya, saka pa lang siya makakabawi. Okay, so that's your payback the time required to reach this point of payback period, okay? The time when you are able to cover up your initial investment cost, okay? So also in your uh, assessment criteria, you need to also give a treatment of the risks. So that's why I have made here a table, which is an example for you to follow, that you identify the, the risks and then you're going to give the treatment. Okay. Okay. So that's it for task three. And uh, if you have any issues and problems, please just contact me. Okay. Um, I'll try to reply to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much and have a good day.